Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to convert a hierarchical JSON data uh, to a more visual tree structure using T3. So um, something that looks like this. This is a horizontal tree structure uh, and uh, the green nodes are the ones with uh, individual child nodes and the red nodes are the end, end nodes. Uh, this tree structure is also interactive so you can uh, collapse the nodes and you can uh, expand them so I'll just show you how I implemented this okay let's run through um, a sequence of steps that I'm going to use to code this up so the first thing I'm going to do is um, use a dot hierarchy method on the root node that's the main node uh, in the JSON tree structure then I'm going to create three separate join functions uh, one to track paths, the second to track circles, and the third to track text. Uh, each of these functions will accept an array, and that's how D3 will determine how many paths, circles, and text to enter, which ones to exit. So the real challenge here is basically somehow updating those circles. So for example, if I collapse a circle, I somehow need to uh, determine what are all the child elements to that circle and then basically update the array that is remove those circles, paths and text and pass it to the respective join methods uh, to basically collapse the node. It's the, it's the same applies when I'm expanding the nodes I need to re-enter those paths, circles and text and then pass the updated array back to those join functions for expanding that node uh, this will all become way more clear as we as we start to code this up each time a circle is clicked it'll either collapse or expand so we just need to somehow track uh, which circle has been clicked and when it collapses we need to grab hold of all those uh, child nodes which includes the text elements the paths and the circles and somehow keep it um, save it somewhere in some different array that next time when we click on that circle we use the circle ID to basically look up uh, which were all the child nodes we removed previously and then basically add those back to the array and then pass it back to the join function so let's just start coding and uh, I'll see you at the other end and we'll run through the code
Okay, let's run through the code. So we have a .html file, nothing much happening here, just some CSS styles. And uh, we have a dev element uh, that contains our SVG. In the main.js, I'm first grabbing hold of the JSON data. Then I'm using the dot links method to get the paths array and dot descendants method to get both circles and the text arrays. I'll also quickly show you what's returned by the dot links and the dot dependence method. So the dot links method returns us an array of uh, objects with each object having a source and a target. As you can see, each source object uh, connects to the children. So from the parent node, for example, the first object, the actual object is named flare and it's connected to 10 children. So that's this object and it's connected to 10 of these children. So the first children that it's connected to. Similarly, if we look at the, the target node, the target node here is analytics and it's connected to three children. So which is these three. So this is how you can uh, basically see which attributes and values you're interested in. For example, each of these uh, source and target objects have their X and Y positions. So that's the dot links. Uh, similarly, dot dependence, which we use to uh, construct the circles and position the text objects, returns us uh, each of those nodes, uh, the depth and the X and Y positions. Then I'm creating basically three functions. Uh, one is to create paths these are the join functions they all use the same structure so there is a enter function there is an update function and exit function the dot data method needs a unique um, some kind of unique attribute to determine if it's a unique path so in this case i'm using name because i know this particular json i'm using have unique names but you can use ids or values or just based on uh, based on the type of json file you're using so uh, this is a function for the paths and uh, then we have the function for the circles and then we have the function for the texts. Obviously, each of these functions use different attributes based on the type of element. And then uh, the other thing is um, you will notice uh, there are some transition effects here. So that I'm using dot call at the end of the function. Uh, so the real logic happens within the circle event. This is where each time a circle is clicked, it either expands or collapses depending on its previous state so uh, this is where i grab hold of the button id to make and then i check to see whether this circle has been previously clicked or not so the first time a circle is clicked it's going to miss the if block because it hasn't been clicked before so what it's going to do is uh, it's going to grab hold of any child elements for that circle and this is all part of the uh, data that is returned from all these different methods so when you're looking at the code just feel free to add some console logs to see actually what is d3 returning so i grab hold of the value array then i'm just using filter methods to filter those values out so the, this is where i'm firstly filtering those values out grabbing hold i'm basically creating another array then i'm going to use this array in this case update path links and i'm going to pass it back to the update method. So this, in this case, all the paths that we have removed will not be part of this array. And then D3 will basically remove those nodes. And the same uh, I'm repeating for circles and the text. The other thing I'm doing is not only I'm filtering those values out, I'm also grabbing all of those values in a separate variable. So I'm grabbing all of all the paths I'm removing here all the circles I'm removing and all the text I'm removing. And the reason for that is uh, when the circle is clicked the next time, we need to expand that node. So we need to somehow um, have a hook to that data. So in this case, I'm just saving that data on a, in a separate array with the button ID. So the next time the button is clicked and we detect that this button was previously collapsed, we can grab hold of the data. So this is what I'm doing here. I can grab hold of the data and then concatenate it with the previous array, which is the path links. And then I can pass the method, uh, pass that array back to the update method. So um, pretty much uh, we're removing the nodes, uh, removing the stuff from the array, passing in the update and vice versa. 
um, I will make this code available. Please feel free to take a look and suggest other better ways to achieve the same thing. Um, and thank you for watching.